I wore a continuous glucose monitor for 14 days. I understood how my blood glucose spikes and crashes after some of the foods I was eating for the first time in my life. We all have different metabolic health and that's why it's important to learn about your own unique body. Hi, my name is Praveen and a type 2 diabetic. My recent HbA1c was quite high and I want to get that number down. So I decided to test it out by recording all the food I eat in a week. I woke up and checked my fasting blood glucose levels and it was within the range, I think it was 6.6, .6. that wasn't too bad. I had a bowl of oats with milk, some blueberries and sunflower seeds. I also added 35 grams of whey protein and about 5 grams of creatine. My post 2 hour glucose was 8.8. .8. For lunch I had doses, had 2 of them with 3 eggs on top and ate them with ginger pickle. I also had a small bowl of fried peanuts. I noticed that there was a huge spike in my blood glucose within 10 minutes but it did come down to 9.7 after a couple of hours. I didn't eat anything else till I went out for dinner, met my friends and had two and a half pints of beer and a lot of Indian food. Came back home around 11.30pm and checked my bedtime glucose and it was 11.2 millimoles per litre. This is my daily graph and the logbook of glucose spikes and drops. Not great but was half expecting that. The first two circles show the spikes immediately after breakfast and lunch. My blood glucose remained elevated during the entire evening as seen in the third circle. The food I ate on day one was how I used to eat all these years. This gave me a reasonable amount of insight. I checked my morning fasting blood glucose. The reading was showing 12, which is, in my opinion, very, very high. I think, I think the reason for that is I went out last night with my friends and had a good time. I had a couple of beers and also some lovely food because of which I think the, the spike is explained why it is so high. I feel a bit heavy right now also and when I woke up, so I went out for a walk in the garden. That actually really helped me. Nature heals. I wanted to kind of not eat breakfast because I didn't feel like eating, so I had a couple of cups of chai. I might have another one, but no solid food at all. I've been tracking my blood glucose after each cup of chai. Right now, I think it's about 8.9. I crave for some comfort food right now, since it's the first meal of the day. It's about 1.45 in the afternoon. So let, let's go to McDonald's and have some food and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see how it rises or drops. I'll keep you posted. So we drove to McDonald's and had a Big Mac burger meal that came with fries and Diet Coke. It was okay, nothing special. My blood glucose rose sharply from 6.8 to 12.8 within an hour, but dropped down to 10.2 after two hours. Not liking the blood glucose spikes at all. For dinner, I had home-cooked chicken curry with rice, one of my favorites. Enjoyed it, but again, as I expected, the spike happened within an hour of eating from around 8 to 11.2. My two hour post dinner reading was 11.6 millimoles per liter. Finally, my bedtime glucose level showed 10.5 millimoles per liter. Today's logbook and daily graph look like this. Doesn't look good today. I felt pretty rough throughout the day. My attention span was not great and my energy levels were definitely low. Wanted to take a nap in the afternoon. 
Looks like I was overlooking that tired feeling all these years without knowing how high my blood glucose was. Something to think about. Today is day three of week one. I slept a bit late yesterday, just before midnight. I managed to read a chapter from the book I'm reading right now. It's called The Diabetes Code by Dr. Jason Fung. I'm learning so much about insulin and blood glucose and what actually insulin is and the roles it plays in our bodies. I woke up quite early today, just before 6 a.m. and checked my fasting blood glucose levels. It was 7.7. .7. Not that great, but much better than the previous morning when it was through the roof. An interesting observation. I had a tingling sensation in my fingers when I reached out to grab my mobile. Does it resonate any of this with you? This is not the first time that's happened, but I never took notice of it seriously. As always, I'll update you on how the day went. And of course, the, the blood glucose peaks and troughs, which I'm expecting a fair bit today. It was a good Sunday for us as a family, spent a lot of time together and managed to get a few chores done. Also found time to read for a bit in the garden. Breakfast, I had the regular oats with milk. The two hour blood glucose was showing eight millimoles per litre. For lunch, I ate the chicken curry and rice from yesterday. The two hour blood glucose spike was 9.8, an expected spike for a diabetic when there's no fiber included. Had a third of a chocolate cheesecake and some almonds and raisins at IKEA as a snack. I expected a drastic rise, but the two hour spike was 10.4. Still out of the range, but not as much as I expected. Now for dinner, I had four slices of pizza and two chicken wings around 9 pm. The two hour spike is 11.4 millimoles per liter. Today's logbook and daily graph look like this. Not great, to be honest. After three days of carb-heavy food, my blood glucose levels are not good at all. They're extremely high and it makes me wonder, have all these years of regular eating kept my glucose levels elevated most of the time, ultimately tipping me over the scale into becoming a type 2 diabetic? Does your food look similar to mine? I slept well last night, around 8 hours. My morning blood glucose showed 9.7 millimoles per litre. I feel much better than the last couple of days, but my face feels a bit puffed up. I'm definitely not active as I normally am, and, and I'm quite surprised because it's only been three days so far. It will be interesting to see how I feel today and for the rest of the week. As usual, I had a cup of chai, always, without sugar, around 7.40 a.m. My two-hour blood glucose showed 9.5 millimoles per litre. So I don't know if that's the chai that's spiking it up a bit, but I'll keep an eye on it anyway. It's time for my breakfast now, so I'll see you soon. So for breakfast, I had leftovers from Friday evening, a couple of rotis and monkfish curry. There was a significant spike in the blood glucose levels and was showing as 12.2 millimoles per litre. Had a late lunch around 5 p.m., two toasts, one with butter and the other with jam. The two hour spike showed 10.3. Had a couple of shots of whiskey with some peanuts, was 12.8, very high before the drink, but dropped to 9.3 90 minutes after. For dinner, I ate the leftover chicken curry and rice and the two hour post check was showing 11.3. My daily logbook and the daily graph look like this. Not great, to be honest, but that's how it is. I did a random check around three o'clock and it was very high, 13.7. As far as how I felt at the time, didn't feel anything drastic like wanting to take a little nap or my head spinning or anything like that. It, however, dropped to 10.2 around 3.40. I'm not liking it at all, actually, all this eating whatever I can, like my old self. I'm aware that some people can take carb-heavy food and each person's body responds differently to the same food. But if that's completely true, then the million dollar question is why are there so many diabetics in the world? I woke up early at around 5.40 a.m. I couldn't sleep properly. I think I slept around six hours and I checked my fasting glucose and it showed 8.4 millimoles per litre. It's okay, but it's not the same as being under six. But then again, that's 
kind of expected, I guess. I randomly checked um, my blood glucose again at 7.40 a.m. and it showed a big spike, 11.4 millivolts per liter, I think. I'll put it up. I wonder what triggered that spike. For breakfast, I'm having oats, blueberries and whey protein and the rest. Uh, it's around 8, 10 a.m. and I'll keep you posted about the two hour blood glucose for this and also for the rest of the foods I eat. The post to our blood glucose for breakfast showed 8.4. For lunch, I had a cheese toasty, a packet of salt and vinegar crisps and a bottle of Diet Coke. Just before lunch, the blood glucose reading was 7.7 .7 and the reading was showing 11.3 after two hours. Had half a chocolate cookie around 3.50 p.m. and the reading showed 12.6 after 90 minutes. I had a beer after work today with colleagues. The reading was 9.7 around 6 p.m. The two hour post glucose showed 8.2. Dinner, I ate one of my favorite comfort foods, rice and dal with an omelet. The reading spiked to 11 after an hour of eating. Still stayed high, showing 11.6 after a couple of hours. My daily logbook and daily graph look like this. The lunch spike was not something I was expecting. It rose to 13.9 millimoles per litre in an hour after lunch. This unsettled me a little bit. I used to eat this on a regular basis, for years actually. A meal deal for lunch, typically a sandwich, a packet of crisps and a drink. No wonder I used to feel tired all those years. I felt the same today also. It's getting to a point where if the reading shows anything below 9, I'm feeling okay as most of the time it's above that number these days. This is not normal. It shouldn't be. Good morning. Today is day 6 of week 1. I woke up around 6.30 and checked my blood glucose levels and it was at 10.2 millimoles per litre. That's not great as it is, but when I looked at the graph from last night, I was shocked. At around bedtime, it was 9.3 and it kept rising until midnight and had touched 17 millimoles per litre. Now that scared me. Imagine looking at this first thing in the morning. For breakfast, I had the usual porridge made with oats, semi-skim milk, chocolate flavoured whey protein. The reading just before I ate breakfast showed 8.6 millimoles per litre. I'll keep you updated on the two hour blood glucose levels. It was 12.6 after 30 minutes and 9.2 after 2 hours. For lunch, I had a homemade sandwich. was tasty but even more delicious was the flapjack made by my daughter. The reading just before lunch was 7.2 around 12.45 and it showed 9.8 after a couple of hours. For a snack, I had a cappuccino and a bag of ready salted crisps around 2 p.m. and it spiked to 13.1 in 2 hours. Met a few friends in the evening and had a couple of drinks and some nibbles and as I was expecting, there were a few peaks and troughs. The reading was 6.9 around 7pm before my first drink. Checked again at 10.36 and it was really high at 14.4. My daily logbook and the daily graph look like this. The rapid rise last night really spooked me. My bedtime reading showed 14.4 millimoles per litre. This is what beer and some nibbles do to the blood glucose levels. How am I feeling right now? I'm glad the normal eating and drinking is finishing tomorrow. The number of times my blood glucose spiked out of range is something that got me. I'm beginning to understand how food and drink affect a human body. Today is day 7 of week 1. In many ways, I'm glad today is the last day of eating normally as I'm not really enjoying the food and drink which is keeping my blood glucose levels elevated above the expected range. I went out with friends for one drink at a pub and had four pints in the end. Way too much. Uh, do you also get carried away sometimes when having a good time? It certainly happens with me. My daughter woke me up today at 6.45 a.m. and I checked my fasting blood glucose. As expected, it was showing really high uh, reading of 11.8 millimoles per litre. I went about my normal routine of freshening up and had my first cup of tea. Did a random check at 10 a.m. and was showing exactly the same as when I woke up, 11.8 millimoles per litre.
I had um, the leftover chicken curry and dal with a couple of rotis. Just before eating, I had checked and the blood glucose reading was 8.7 millimoles per liter. Within an hour though, it spiked to 13 uh, millimoles per liter. That's a big one. Uh, right now, after nearly two hours of uh, having breakfast, it's still very high at 13.9 millimoles per liter. I don't know what to say. <laughs> For lunch, I had a hot dog with some mustard, mayonnaise and ketchup on top. Just before eating, the reading showed 9.3. The reading after a couple of hours was 14.1. Cannot believe a hot dog in Costco is capable of doing that to my blood glucose levels. The post two hour reading was 7.7 .7 millimoles per litre. For dinner, I had minced beef and roti around 8.30 p.m. The reading was 7.1 just before I ate. My 90-minute blood glucose is showing 11.3, which is quite high. My daily logbook and the daily graph look like this. The morning fasting reading was as expected, very high. The lunch spiked rapidly within an hour and the drastic drop after two hours was not something I anticipated. As for the peaks and troughs, you can see them on the right, they are all over the place. The HbA1c is shown based on just the one week of tracking my food. I have done this without missing any of the meals I've eaten. So what have I learned over the past week? I've learned that the carbohydrates spike my blood sugar significantly. Even common meals like a sandwich, crisps and a drink led to unexpected high spikes. My body does not handle carbs well and they are likely a major contributor to my high blood sugar. The second thing I noticed is that my blood glucose stays elevated for hours. It just didn't spike, it remained high for extended periods. Even after several hours, it wasn't returning to a healthy baseline. My body struggles to regulate blood sugar effectively after carb heavy meals. I've also noticed that certain foods and drinks cause drastic spikes and crashes. A simple beer and nibbles before bed push my glucose to 14.4 millimoles per litre, which is way too high. Also something like rice and dal spike my blood glucose levels. So the lesson is, casual snacking and drinking can have a huge impact on blood sugar. And finally, tracking my blood sugar has been eye-opening. Seeing real-time data has changed how I view food. Tracking helped me understand which foods are better choices and which ones are not. And the lesson here is, what I thought are small, harmless food choices actually have a massive impact. And that's it for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.